channel where we make mathematics easy the topic we'll be looking at today is actually the topic called probability i want to believe for you know yx students for you know either junior yx students for senior yx students if you've actually written the exam before now or you are preparing for the exam you would have seen some questions involving probability probably those questions have been challenging to you i believe this video and some other videos we've done on probability which happen to be three in number will be of great help to you in the three previous videos the first one we talked about facts about probability in that same video, I mean lesson one, we talked about the probability formula and we solved some basic problems. In the second video, we analyzed the concept of the coin, the concept of the die and that of a playing card. Okay, we solved some problems. In the third video, we talked about mutually exclusive events, we talked about independent events and we talked about dependent events. We also solve some problems on that now we have the final lesson but i would what i would do in this lesson i'll start by solving another problem again on combined probability which could be mutually exclusive which could be independent and which could be dependent i'll solve a problem on that then we now go to the last part of this topic which is the tree diagram now the tree diagram T R E E so that's the tree so the tree the growth of the tree to explain how to get outcomes under probability let us start with the first example before we go into tree diagram in this problem we have two hunters the first one eating the target is 1 over 5 while the second one eating the target is 2 over 7 now the first question is asking the probability that both of them will eat the target now I, I'm going to make use of some of those things we learned in v lesson 1 some of those things we learned in lesson 3 also more of lesson 1 and lesson 3 to solve this question now before I solve the question let me start with the hunter one whose probability of eating the target is 1 over 5 now going to what we learned on that lesson one if the probability of eating the target is 1 over 5 what will be the probability of not eating the target that will be 1 minus 1 over 5 which is 4 over 5 so i'm going to take the probability of eating the target as h of the first hunter eating the target as h1 then i'll take the probability of not eating the target as h1 bar you can see a line on the h that is bar h1 bar so the probability of it that is that means that the probability of h1 is equal to 1 over 5 then the probability of h1 bar is 4 over 5 that is settled let us do the same thing for the second hunter the probability of the second hunter eating the target, we can take that to be H2. That, according to the question, is 2 over 7. Then, the probability of the second hunter not eating the target will be 1 minus 2 over 7. That is 5 over 7. So, I can write that probability of H1 is 2 over 7. Probability of H1 bar, which is probability of the second hunter, not eating the target is 5 over 7. Let us piece the question. The first part of the question says probability both of them, that is the two hunters, eat the target. That means we are taking H1 and H2, no bar. Because the bar means they did not. But the question is asking us that they both eat the target. So probability the first one eats the target and the second one, H1 and H2. Our H1 is what? 1 over 5. Remember, I told you that AND is what? Multiplication. So, I have 1 over 5 times probability that H2 also eats the target is what? 2 over 7. So, if I multiply that, numerator 1 times 2, that gives us 2. 5 times 7 is 35. I can conclude that probability that both hunters eat the target 
is 2 over 35. Second question then says, probability only the first eats the target. Now, take a look at this question. It said only the first eats the target. But the question gave us two answers. Now, logic should tell us that the second answer did not eat the target. If we're talking about two answers and only one eats the target, then we can say that the second missed its own target. So that means we are to do a calculation for probability of H1 and probability of H2 bar. That is H1, the answer 1, eats the target and the probability that the answer 2 did not eat the target. That is why the H2 is taking a bar. We have our values earlier. So H1 is what? 1 over 5. Why H2 bar is what? 5 over 7. If I multiply that, that will be 5 over 35, which would lead us to what? 1 over 7. Now, the third question says probability one of them will eat the target. Now, this question is different from the second one in, this, in the sense that the, the, the second one specified the first hunter will eat the target. And we were able to conclude that the second one will miss the target. But now, only one of them, we don't know if it is the first or the second. So we can have a case whereby the first will eat the target. We can also have a case whereby the second will eat the target. Now, if the first should eat the target, let us bear it in mind that the second will miss it. And if the second is the one that is eating the target, of course, the first miss the target. So we can have the probability of this form. We can have the probability of H1 and H2 bar, meaning first hunter eats, second hunter missed, missed because of the bar, or probability of H1 bar and H2, that is, the first hunter missed, the second hunter eats the target. Let us put in the values. We have 1 over 5 for H1 and then 5 over 7 for H2 bar, that is, miss the target, or which is plus. Then we have um, 4 over 5 for H1 bar times, which is the and, times 2 over 7, which is for H2. So if I multiply the first one, that is 1 and 5, that is 5 over 35. Then if I multiply the second one, which is 4 and 2, that is 8 over 35. So 5 plus 8 is 13, so we have 13 over 35. The final question there says both of them will miss the targets. This is a straightforward question, just like the first one that says both of them will eat the target. So for both of them will miss the target, we are dealing with probability of H1 bar and H2 bar. So H1 bar from our analysis is 4 over 5. And that of H2 bar is what? Is 5 over 7. So that will be 20 over 35. If I reduce 5, 5 in 20 is 4. 5 in 35 is 7. So that is 4 over 7. Let's take a look at the tree diagram. The tree diagram is an ideal method for solving questions on probability that happens in a consecutive manner. Again, the tree diagram is an ideal method for solving probability questions that happens in a consecutive manner, events that happen in a consecutive manner. Now, let us talk about the growth of the tree. Now, if I have a tree, it starts growing from the roots, then up from the roots, it starts having branches, branches, then even a branch can lead to another, another set of branch and so on like that. That is exactly what we are going to make use of in our explanation of a tree diagram as regards probability. It always starts from the root. The root could be picking balls from a bag. It could be picking from a basket. It could be coin. You know, the coin is the, a coin is a root. It can give us two different outcomes. The two outcomes or the two the two outcomes represent the two branches, which will be the head and the tail. If I'm talking about a die now, 
a die will give us six outcomes one two three four five six which will give that means from the roots of that of a die we are getting six branches one branch for one the other branch for two the other branch for three the other branch for four the other branch for five and the other branch for what for six so that is what the tree looks like let us take a good example to see how to draw a tree diagram and with that we can easily pick out our values for questions that are repeated i mean for consecutive you know events in this example we have a coin tossed three times a coin one just one coin is tossed three times now let us take a look at what to do we have our coin we're starting with our coin like i said that coin will serve as the root just like we have the root of the tree now the question is the coin has how many outcomes two the head the tail so we bring out two branches from the root the root is the coin we bring out two branches as you can see one is the head the other is the tail that is to demonstrate our first toss of the coin now from the second toss of the coin we now take another set of branches from each of our initial branch from the first branch we take two other other outcomes that means we, 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 we divide the head the head it will bring out two other branches as you can see the tail also will bring out two other branches that is to explain what that is to explain the second thoughts the question talks about three so we, we need to do one more we have four lines as you can see in the first one we have two branches so that is another one head tail the other one again the second one head tail the third one head tail the fourth one head tail The first part of the question asks for two head, one tail. If you look at the outcomes from the tree diagram, we have HHT, we have HTH, and we have THH, meaning we have three outcomes. And the total outcomes from the tree diagram, they are eight in number. So the probability of getting two head and one tail is three over eight, because we have three of those required outcome and the possible outcome is 8, the sample space. The second part of the question is asking for probability of 3 heads. If you check, the only time we have head, head, head all through is the first one, the first outcome there, just one of them. So that is 1 over 8. Is, that can be tail tail head we can also have tail head tail and we can also have head tail tail they are all in the in, in the in the tree diagram as you can see head tail tail we have um tail head tail and we have the tail tail head so how many are they just three i just counted three so that is three over eight this one says probability at least one tail if you look at the the, the outcomes we have the first one has head, 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 no tail. And the question is asking for at least one tail, meaning that one is out. But if you check every other outcomes, they all have at least one tail, one tail, one tail, the other seven. So the, the answer to the question of probability at least one tail, that is having one T at least. Some have three T, like the last one, some have two, some have one. But the first one has no T. So at least one tail talks about the, the, the seven aside from the first one. So that means the probability at least one tail is seven over eight. This example too, let us use a tree diagram to explain this example. 
to make our understanding of the tree diagram better. Now the question is talking about a playing card, but in all the questions we are talking about picking a queen. Now we know that we have queen, we have the jack, we have the king, we have a, we have one, two, three. If I should draw a tree diagram involving that, the, quest, the, the diagram will become too cumbersome. Since the question is talking about queen and every other thing is not queen, so I will take this question to be a question involving two likely events. What are the two likely events? The two events are probability of picking a queen and the probability of not picking a queen. So I will take my probability of picking a queen to be Q and that of picking of not picking a queen to be what? N. Now let us take our, our root, the root of our tree now, which is a playing card. So the root of our tree is having two outcomes, which are picking a queen and not picking a queen. So you can see the two branches, the first one is Q, the second one is N. We are picking three, three cards, so that means we have to do this three times. So we've done the first one, let us take the next stage, our Q, get two branches, Q, N, the other N, get two branches, Q, N. This is the second stage, remaining one more. So for the first one, the Q, two branches, Q, N, also Q, N, the third one, Q, N, and the last one, Q, N. So let us take our, our outcome when we join all these things together. The first one will be Q, 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 N, Q, N, Q, and then Q, N, N. The one starting with N now, you see it is N, Q, Q, N, Q, N, 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 Q, and then N, N, N. We also have eight outcomes in this case. When in lesson two, we said there are four queens in a card, one for spade, one for club, one for diamond, and one for art. So four queens in the card. So if there are four queens, then the, the ones that are not queen will be 52 minus four, which is what? 48. So we have 48 that are not queen. For our first question, we have probability of three queens. From the tree diagram, the only time we have three queen is Q, Q, Q. That's the first outcome there. So let us take a look at that. Now, what do we do? Probability of three Q. We have Q. How many, how many Q do we have in the card? That is four over 52. For the second Q now, the Q, the second Q. In the case of the second Q, one of the Q would have been picked because the question is talking about without replacement. So that will be 3 over 51. Why the third one? 2Q are gone. Remaining 2, that is 2 over 50. So we multiply all this, we get our result. The second part of the question, the question is asking for two queens. But remember the question is talking about three cards. That means one of the cards we are picking is not a queen. So we are dealing with 2Q, 1N. If you check the tree diagram, for two queen, two Q and one N, you will see Q, Q, N, you will see Q, N, Q, and then you will see N, Q, Q. Now, interpreting that, we can have it to be probability of Q, Q, N, or probability of Q, N, Q, or probability of N, Q, Q. Let's take them one after the other. Let's put the values there now. So for the first part of the question Q, Q, N, we have 4 over 52, that's the number of Q, 4, total is 52. For the second Q, we are having 3. Why? Because we've picked one Q out, one Q is taken off. So it's 3 over 51 times our N, our N is still intact, we've not touched N. So N is 48 over 50, 50 because we've actually picked two balls. That's total. That's the first part. For the second part, we have what? Q, N, Q. So that is 4 over 52 times our N now is what? 48. We've not touched the N. 48, but the total we've touched 51 times our Q. We've picked one Q at first. So that reduced from 4 to 3 over 50. Now for the last part, which is what? N, Q, Q. Our N is 48 over the total 52 times Q. 
we've not touched any key. What we picked is n. So that will be 4 as it is according to the question. Um, 4 over what? 51, which is as a result of the one we've picked from 52. Then, and the last one is 3 over 50. So we multiply all the. Please to tell you that we've come to the end of this lesson probability. All probability question has to do with all we have said so far. If only you can follow what we did in lesson 1, lesson 2, lesson 3 and lesson 4. This is a video for lesson 4 where we talked about an example on combined probability again and we also talked about the tree diagram. But before now we've had three lessons which is very very useful and key as far as solving probability problems is concerned. I will need you to subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can access those videos, those videos lesson 1, 2 and 3 on the topic probability. Not just that, this is William's guide to mathematics, meaning we have several topics on this channel as regards mathematics. So if you need any other topic, just check through the channel. Once you have subscribed, you'll see all these videos there and you'll be able to enjoy mathematics and take mathematics to be a very simple subject. It is our joy that you do very well in mathematics. I'll see you very soon.